Hello, and welcome to the 16 Bitching Podcast. Today, we are going to be looking at... Oi, what are we doing? But I thought I could help. No, 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 you can fuck off. This is my show. You never play with me anymore. <laughs> nope, out. I'm sorry. Can we please play some Shenmue? Out. Get out, you piece of crap. <laughs> fucking come over here and fucking steal my shit. I do apologise for that. That was my Dreamcast. Um, yes, it is sentient. It is alive and it talks to me. And annoys the shit out of me. I'm going to have to put some sort of lock on the fucker. Anyway, yes, welcome to the 16 Bitchin' Podcast. It is another episode for another week. And here's a random bit of news for you. This is the last one of me recording before actually publishing this shit. That's right, I haven't actually clicked publish on a single episode up to this point. You would have heard them, but I haven't published them yet. I wanted to make a bit of a backlog of episodes so that I didn't feel pressured into, oh, I have to record and edit and get one ready every week. No, you know, shit happens sometimes that doesn't work out. So if I'm ahead by like three episodes each time, great. But enough of that, bollocks. We have the usual ready for you. One modern game, one retro game, and one indie game to talk bollocks about. And yes, a little bit of news of what's going on with me. Not much, to be honest. Uh, it was the wife's birthday today. She very kindly allowed me to record, but I've got a time limit. So, news-wise, that's it. I've got to cut it straight to the important shit. Straight to the games. How nice is that? No fucking around for a change. We're going straight into it. And I'm looking forward to talking about this modern game. Because, funny thing is, I was a bit baffled thinking, the fuck am I going to talk about for this podcast? Like, I had a retro one in mind. I had an indie one in mind. Modern? You know, bit of a brain fart. I, thought, I, don't, know, I don't know what to play, uh, talk about. I, I, I don't know. And then this one came to me, and I thought, this is perfect. I can chat shit about this. So we're going straight into it. This game, while it has a couple of variations on the name, I'm just going to go with this one, is Plague Inc. A real-time strategy simulation video game. This, surprisingly, is something I had played forever ago. But it's evolved. And yes, there is a type of this game called Plague Inc. Evolved. So what is this? All right, real-time strategy simulation. Fuck's that mean? Well, this game is all about creating the ultimate virus or bacteria or basically plague and killing the entire world destroying the human race making sure every single motherfucker out there is dead that is your goal and it's brilliant it's i know it's it's pretty sad it's pretty fucked up but it's genuinely fun but when you look at it, when you look at this game, you're like, is that it? Mate, I hate to break it to you. That's not a video game. That's an atlas. The whole game, the whole game is based on looking at a map of the world, obviously. So that sounds crap, doesn't it? Let's be honest. If you're staring at a flattened out globe, as it were, how is that fun? Let's just play out in our minds one of the levels, right? Let's say we've picked, to keep it simple, virus. What are you gonna name your virus? Well, I'm a very boring person, so I would call it T-Virus. Yeah, yeah, I know, fuck you. And then you think, where would I plant said virus? You can start it anywhere in the world. Anywhere. I know a few places that really help in actually succeeding to do this. You think, well, when you made the virus, don't you just let it go? and then it just kills everyone off. Well, no, think how many viruses and how many other things we as a species have somehow magically managed to beat. Yes, I know you're thinking COVID-19, and we'll get to COVID, 
I don't know how well this podcast is going to do with the mention of that fucking thing. I don't really give a shit. But for now, let's just take our mythological virus, the T-Virus, and plant it... <sighs> Fuck it. England. It starts off. It infects a few people. They don't even realize they have it. Maybe they have a slight cough. Maybe they have the sneezes. Maybe they have nothing. But they're carrying the virus. And they just don't know it. They don't know how doomed they truly are. And they infect each other by touch. By breathing the same air as them. Maybe they get into an elevator and everyone else in that elevator is a little bit buggered for catching it. Who knows? You can't see individuals getting sick. You can't do that. All you can see is the numbers and little red dots symbolizing where the fuck these people are. If you happen to be watching this on YouTube rather than just listening to it via podcast, then you can see some gameplay footage. But at the end of the day, the gameplay is, is literally, it's a fucking map. It's, it's just a map, so don't get too excited by that. But it's so much fun. Your virus, you try to make it airborne, or maybe you try to get it so it's contagious to... I don't know. Wildlife. Birds. Rats. Remember the Black Death? You wouldn't think rats would be a big thing, but mm -hmm, it works. Bloody good at spreading viruses, diseases, little bastards that they are. And before you know it, you have infected a neighboring country. You are spreading across the world. Slowly, but surely. You can speed up how fast the game goes. I mean, you could have it going like the days are one, two, three, four, five. I shit you not, it says that in the top corner of the screen with a counter the days can go by like seconds which does help with the start of the game but when you're near the end of it if you've still got that speed dialed right up you're gonna fuck it because the humans try to fight back against the disease eventually when they realize it exists the clever thing is to try and make sure no one realizes they're getting sick at first you don't want them knowing about it because when people know they're getting ill they try to cure it don't I? Medication. And you can build up tolerances for your virus against some medication. Not all. It's not perfect. And that is the aim of the game. To try and take out everyone really strategically. It's not just a case of make them sick and see what it does. Because that will never work. You know who's an absolute bastard for killing off? I've done it so many times where I've killed off the entire map. Bar one. Blasted country. Greenland. Let's face it, not a hell of a lot there in terms of trade, so there's not a hell of a lot of ways to get there. In real life, there's undoubtedly more, but in the video game, there is one airport and one dock. So the ability to you know, so the ability to go there by air or boat. There's only one access, and when when the fucking virus gets a bit too out of control. Humans will close borders, as we have recently discovered. By closing the borders, you can't infect the people there. If people start dying too quick, if you've made this virus too strong, too deadly, too powerful, too terrifying, that it is killing off the entire race before you can infect the entire race, you've buggered it. And Greenland is a real sod of one to do. I like to infect them first, because it basically get the hard country out of the way, you know. The other funny thing is, if you start off infecting China, that helps a lot. It just seems to spread a lot more. Obviously, China has a bloody great big population, so that helps. And um, the funny thing is, this game is kind of a remake of another game called Pandemic. And... Uh, more specifically, Pandemic 2. You never hear anyone talk about Pandemic 1, but Pandemic 2, I played back in the day when I was at school. These were the early days of having technology classes with computers. Fucking great big things with CRT monitors. These computers sucked. They were shite. They are nothing compared to what we have nowadays. Me and my mates would get in there. A teacher would be literally flipping through A4 bits of paper, trying to figure this shit out himself so he can teach you. That cunt's got no clue. We would go to a website we discovered called addictinggames.com. No bloody clue if that's still there. Probably is. It's quite a simple name. And we found a game called Pandemic 2. Wow, we loved it. Killing everyone. Ah, 
Loved it. It was even more basic than Plague, though, because in Plague Inc., the world is made to look like a world. You can see the oceans moving, clouds, there's hilltops, mountaintops, there's sort of like a texture to the planet. In Pandemic 2, the land is green, the sea is blue. It's basically two fucking colours, and if a place gets infected, it just becomes solid red. And I think solid black if every fucker dies within a country. It was a very simple game, but it was so much fun. Then Pandemic 2 basically inspired Plague Inc. I don't think that Plague Inc. is um, made by the same people as Pandemic 2. I don't know. Who knows? But Plague Inc. originally started on mobile phones. Not Pandemic 2, of course. I'm on about Plague now. It was just uh, Android, Windows, phone, all that shit. When we had the Ebola outbreak in 2014, I believe, there was a huge surge in the amount of people playing this game. Then, years later, we got this film called Contagion. Absolutely shit film. I went to see it with some friends at the cinema when it was originally out. Pure crap. The only, th the only good thing about that film. This may be a bit of a spoiler, but trust me, I'm doing you a favour. Don't watch this film. It's no, it's no good. It's crap. It's absolute crap. Gwyneth Paltrow's in it. She dies. That's brilliant. That's absolutely brilliant. But who gives a fuck? That's not a good enough reason to watch a film. I could YouTube her dying, and then I'd be happy. As everyone should be. But the film Contagion had a huge surge in popularity when COVID became a thing, didn't it? Because of that, the people that made Plague Inc. went out of their way to make a console version. Plague Inc. evolved. And now you can get it on your PS4, your Switch. It's an incredibly fun game. I don't know if it's a little fucked up that we as a species really get into this game when we have these huge viruses. I reckon it's 50% nutcases who want to see everybody die and 50% people who are really worried about the outbreak of the virus that they want to see a sort of simulation as to what could happen. So there must have been a lot of people that would play Plague, like, what do you want to name your virus? I want to call it Corona or COVID-19. You know what I mean? They would call it all of that crap and then they would kind of let it run its course and try to copy history. All right, it starts in China. Let's have this going. Let's see what happens here. The game became incredibly popular because of that. Luckily, I found out the game from Pandemic 2 forever ago and I loved it because of the fun. I do find it a little fucked up that it became so popular because of bloody COVID. It's, it's a little weird. Let's face it, it's a little weird. What else can I say about the game? Not a lot. It's very basic. It's very simple. It's very enjoyable. You, there is another version of DLC where you can make a cure. Uh, I think it's literally called The Cure. I've not played that. Not too bothered. Um, obviously trying to fight off the disease it's like looking at the game from the other side of the coin i'm not too interested in that sorry i'm not they are we've spent enough time talking about our modern game fucked up as it is and now we are moving on to our retro game now anyone who knows me from youtube will know that i am a huge fan of the alien franchise I didn't know what to do for a retro game this time. I had a bit of a blank spot, probably trying to think of all the stuff I needed to plan for my wife's birthday. That when it came to this episode of the podcast, I was a bit thick for what to talk about game-wise. Like I said, talking about the modern one, I couldn't think. The retro one, I had something in mind, and I changed my mind again and again. Then I found this on my modded PlayStation Classic, so thank you very much to Zobster for helping me out with that. You were the reason I was able to play this game to talk about it. This is Aliens Arcade. Yes, Aliens Arcade. You may have seen Mike Retro Gamer Boy playing this on a live at the arcade once. Do you want know the funny thing is, I know I said this when I was uh, co-hosting live at the arcade, but not a lot of people really knew the extent of it. When he was playing a game, I did not really get to watch it. It's because of signal back and forth between us two talking. The game footage he showed me slowed everything down and fucked things up. 
So we stopped doing that and I couldn't see the game footage except for a delay of watching the actual live stream on YouTube the same way you'd be watching it if you were watching it. So I didn't get to see it. Plus I was concentrating on the chat. I was trying to keep things going with the live stream and I think we did a good job in terms of hosting the live stream. I do, I think we managed to keep it going just well enough. But when he was playing Aliens Arcade, I hardly got to see it. And I obviously didn't get to play it. So I didn't know much about it. And I forgot everything the instant we had finished uh, doing that live stream. I forgot the whole fucking thing. So when playing this game, it was incredibly fresh for me. And I got so many things I would like to say about this game. Again, I'm a big Aliens fan. So I don't know how this one skipped me by, other than the simple fact it's the arcade. There was no... Hmm. There was no faithful port to a video game. Remember, video game? Twat. To consoles. <laughs> For a, fuck me, I'm stupid. When it came to getting alien games on consoles, aside from Alien on the Atari 2600, absolutely fabulous game there, we really got Alien Free as our first game. We got that on the NES, Mega Drive, and Master System. Uh, the Mega Drive is the best looking one. The Master System one is honestly the best playing one. But no matter what you do about it, it is a crap game, whatever it's on. It's, it's not very well done. It's just done because of the hype of the movie, you know, money, money, money. But the game sucks. So we were very lucky to get this awesome game. Even though it was only on arcade, which is a shit. I mean, it has such a great use of colours. The game's incredibly colourful. I know it's meant to be a horror game, but it really doesn't look like it when there's so many bright yellows and purples, blues, greens. Incredibly colourful game. So much so, I got it fucking wrong! In this game, Ripley is blonde. Yep. Well done. How the fuck summing up? Make Sigourney Weaver a blonde. That only worked once, and that was Galaxy Quest. God Damn, did she look fucking beautiful in that movie. Fun movie. Not bad. Was it epic? Here's my game in it. Is it alright? But god damn, did she look fine. <laughs> Any hoops. Aside from the wrongness of that colour. Also, Newt's in the game. That's brilliant that she's in it. I'm so much a nerd, I actually got a bit pissed off when I saw that Newt was jumping around holding her toy, and you think, there, yeah, it's Newt! Rabbit. Cuddly rabbit toy. You got it fucking wrong! She had a doll. And she's just a piece of plastic. So she's not a cuddly, sodding bunny! Well done. One way to make me angry, eh? Sad cunt I am. Also, this game <laughs> would have been impossible to play in an actual arcade. You'd have been from rich to poor just to beat it. You die all the time! You die so fucking quickly! I mean, when I was playing this, I was trying to set it up two-player for me and my daughter, and we started by using actual controllers, the PlayStation Classic one that came with it, and then we were using the Evercade one for player two, because that worked absolutely fine. Then we thought we'd mix it out, and we used arcade sticks. That didn't quite work. One of the arcade sticks worked fine with the PlayStation Classic, and the other didn't, but that's aside the point. We were dying every five seconds. I was spamming the select button for more and more credits. I mean, when it comes to playing arcade games via emulation, that's the way you do it. To say, I beat this game on the weekend. One arcade game via emulation. How many credits did you let yourself have? Because that's what it's all down to in difficulty. If you say, no, I'm only going into the game with pff, 20 credits. Oh, there's challenge. If you're going into it with the ability to just top up credits all the way along, you are inevitably going to beat it if you have the time. And seeing as this game is relatively short, that's not a problem. But I can't imagine playing it in the arcade. You could have gone in there with a fiver, and you'd have had no money in one whole minute playing this fucking thing. And I'm from the generation where the arcades had just started turning to shit. So I missed out on quality games like this when they were originally released. When I was young, going into an uh, arcade meant it was loads of um, light gun games. And that was pretty much it for good stuff. But my 
parents would argue, like say, oh, can I have a quid to play House of the Dead? It looks so cool. They would say, and you know what? I don't blame them now, I'm a parent. They would say, no. You want that? You save up the money and you can get it on one of your cons consoles. It'll work out a lot, lot cheaper. And they were right. And this was a time when games were the same in the arcade as they were on console. I think in PlayStation 1, we had Time Crisis. Uh, we had House of the Dead for... Shit. Dreamcast. Sega Set. Was it Sega Saturn? Fuck me. I'm having a brain fart. Whatever. Well done, Sega Head. Hey, stupid cunt. For light guns, light gun games... Yeah, there, there was no point doing it in the arcades. The arcades died very quick. And I didn't get to experience them that much. We didn't have quality arcade games. I'd have loved this back in the day, but it would have eaten my money. Anyway, that's enough about the cost of it. I've gone on about that too long. There are made-up enemies within the game. Like, it's not just facehugger, chestburster, warrior, or maybe queen. That's not a lot of enemies. And if you think back in the day with Alien Trilogy, brilliant game, love that game, it doesn't have a wide range of enemies, like Doom. Doom has so many sodding enemies, whereas Alien Trilogy has very few, because the movie franchises had very few. That's just how it was. There's nothing wrong with that, but when translated to video game, it can be a bit of a pig. So I'm not against Alien games bringing in new types of aliens. Like, I know a lot of people got pissy at... What was it on PS3? Colonial Marines? There were many things wrong with that game, but when people complained about there being xenomorphs within it that didn't exist in the movies, I was fine with that because otherwise we'd have been incredibly limited. You need that variety. That variety is here. There's so many different types of aliens and stuff. It's stupid. But it's great. The only thing I don't like is there's these zombie-looking fuckers. Oh, shit, you're not. Zombies. I'm guessing they're meant to be synths, synthetics, and the only reason why I think that is there's a few of them crawling around on the floor and they've been ripped in half. It's just a torso coming at you, maybe shooting you, so it makes me think, huh, like Bishop, yes, yes, I think I see what you've tried to do, but you've given it purple skin and a fucked up rotten looking face. It looks like a zombie. I'm sorry, this isn't a synth. If you wanted it to be a synth, it should have looked more human. And you can't say, oh, they were trying to not make it look too realistically gory, because there's one level where there's people stuck up against a wall, writhing in agony. I tried to see if I could get, release them from the wall. I couldn't figure out how to do it. And then a chest burster appears on them, falls to the floor, and the person stops wriggling. You're like, oh my fuck, it just jumped out of him and he's dead. All right, then. I, I try, I try, I don't know what the fuck I could have done to save him, even if I got him off the wall, I'd be like, you're right, mate, yeah, Blah! So, yeah, but it was pretty fucked up, so you can't argue that the synths look like zombies rather than more like humans that are ripped in half because of horror, they don't want that. No, some cunt just died on a wall, so that's bollocks. I'll tell you something else that's bollocks. Like I said, you die a lot, you die very quickly. Ripley makes the most annoying bloody sound effect when she dies. It's sort of echoed. It's it's crap. Oh, it's so annoying. The music in the game's great. Some of the sound effects will get on your tits. The aliens sound really good. They sound like aliens. Ripley, I don't know what's going on with her. She don't sound right. She's annoying. The ending of the game, again, it's an arcade game, so, you know, short. The ending's really good. You versus the Queen trying to throw her in the hatch from the movie Aliens, you know, so the, the second film in the franchise. And you get this really cool, like, visual appearance, 16 bit of her being thrown in, then going off into outer space. But then you get this load of text that's just not done right. It's, it's, oh, it's an English fuck up, but it's cool, but it's dumb. Also, the powered up weapons you get, you can get a flamethrower and rockets. They're crap, because you go from the standard gun you get, where you can just hold the fire button, and it shoots constantly, turbo function, basically, or you can get this power-up where that's now gone, you have to tap. It's like, oh, but it kills aliens quicker. No, it doesn't. It kills them at the exact same speed. You just go from one line of fire to maybe three lines of fire. But since I've lost the ability to just constantly fire via turbo, 
it's not bloody worth it. The power-ups in this game are pointless. You could get bombs in the game. And I'm going to have to be honest, I couldn't use the bombs. One, you die too bloody quick. By the time you picked it up, you've died. And you've gone, oh, look, I've lost the bomb. It's been taken away. Great. That sucks. But the button alignment, uh, button... Fuck it. The thing for the PlayStation Classic I have. I tried pressing every button. I could not get fucking Ripley to use the bomb. I don't know what's going on there. It's not the end of the world. One of these days I'll sit down and look into it. But I couldn't use the bomb. So... I have no idea if that's as any good or not. Bollocks to it. And thinking about it, because the game's so short, I don't have much more to say. It looks stunning. It's very colourful. Not scary at all. It sounds brilliant, aside from Ripley. In fact, Ripley's the most annoying thing. She sounds wrong, she looks wrong. Annoying, isn't it? But the gameplay is fantastic. This is a great game. I urge you to see if you can find a way to play it. I know it's a bit difficult, but it is doable. And that is Aliens Arcade. So now we're going to move on to our indie game, which is a bit of a weird one. I did a Let's Play on this game, and I never published the video. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why. I, I never published the video. I was going to, then everything got in the way, and this is right before I decided I'm going to start winding down and quit YouTube altogether. I mean, even now, I don't consider myself a YouTuber. I'm trying to be a podcast guy, and I'm just using YouTube with minimal effort to respond to comments in an easier way. And it's another place, but I asked everyone, would you want it on YouTube? Would you want the podcast on YouTube? Is that a place you would willingly listen to it? Many people said yes. I thought, okay, I guess I'm an idiot if I don't out of some... Uh, hate against YouTube as a platform. Okay, I'm going off on one now. Basically, that's why I never released a video to this game. Shit went wrong. Whatever. This game is an indie game. is weird in the fact that there was a demo made and released, but the final game, the finalised, finished game, I can't find it, nor can I find any news of it. So this game I've played... It's essentially a demo. It is not the entirety of the game that I've been able to play. I had a lot of fun playing it, and I still say it's worth talking about. This game, for the Sega Master System, is Tower of Sorrow. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> um just, give, just give me a minute. Eh? I'm just trying to sort out. Where's the fucking music? You are dumb. This game is just a demo. I thought I told you to fuck off. There is no music. Piece of shit. Go on, get out. Oh shit. Yeah, teach you and get out of my fucking neck of the woods. Yeah, there's no music to this game. <laughs> yeah. I forgot about that when doing this tonight. Yeah, I got no music to play. So here's the funny thing. The reason why I don't have any music for you is that. Uh, I've only played the demo of this game. The PlayStation Classic, which I used to play it on, only had that. It didn't have the full game. The full game is now obtainable, but I haven't played it. I've only played the demo, so I am going to relay my experience of that. I long to play the full game. The full game does look stellar, and I do feel like I'm missing out a bit, but what I have played, I have enjoyed. And I want to put that across. And again, as I said at the start of this, I'm pushed for time. So, since I can't talk too much about this, seeing as, again, only the demo, this seems perfect for my time issues today. So, Tower of Sorrow is a mod slash hack using Alex Kidd in Miracle World. So... When you jump in this game, it has the jumping sound effects of Alex Kidd. Listen. Music-wise, it's something entirely new. My demo had no music. It's completely void of anything musical. The full game, you can listen to something, but it, it doesn't sound terribly awesome. If I'm honest, I kind of liked it being more silent. It was more eerie. You see, this is like an 8-bit horror -y game. Kind of like... Ghouls and Ghosts has that 
horror-y, eerie, scary feel to it, but wrapped up in a bit of silliness. This doesn't have the silliness. It does have a backstory to make it more serious. And I did a Let's Play this game, but I never released it. I never released it because I did intend to, but when it came to quitting YouTube, those of you who are in the know, uh, I was advised by someone to completely abandon doing Let's Plays. So I did, and this was left in the backlog. The video still exists, so I just never click publish. I'm not, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to click publish either. I, mean, I don't really care about YouTube now, so why fucking bother? But on that Let's Play, I did read out the story for this game. So I'm just going to cheat, and I'm going to take that from that Let's Play and plop it right here. In three, two, one, go. Nobody knows the place. Nobody knows the time. A ghastly beast lived in a tall tower near a village. Terrified of the beast's wrath, the villagers gave up their crops to appease it. But a time came when harvest was not plentiful, and so the offerings not as generous as before. Offended, the beast ravaged the village, wreaking havoc everywhere. And as a final act of revenge, attacked one cottage and kidnapped the inhabitants' beloved. Knocked out by the beast, the man came to after a while, and enlisting the help of an old man, found the entrance to the tower, and set out to snatch his love from the beast's claws. Now graphically, it's quite a nice looking game. It is... 50% red and 50% black, you could mistake it for a Virtual Boy game in all honesty, but it is really well done in the graphics. Now, I know I said it's a hack slash mod of Alex Kidd in Miracle World, so you may be thinking of those sort of visuals. Forget about it. There's none of that. Your character has stick-like arms and stick-like legs, wears a grey jumper. When he jumps, yes, he has the Alex Kid sound effect, but that's about it. You get a sword later on. In my demo, he just kind of had the sword, but I have reason to believe that in the full game, that you get it later on, kind of like how Link would find the sword. He wouldn't just have the sword from the beginning, you know. As a platformer, which is, of course, what it is, it's damn good fun. There's spikes everywhere that you have to avoid. There's rolling boulders. There's enemy skeletons you need to slash to death. There's all sorts of obstacles. There's gold coins everywhere, which, um, in my demo, they were only for points. They serve no real purpose. And having checked out and done a bit of research into the full game, which, by the way, if you are listening to this slash watching it on YouTube, a week later after this thing's initial release, you can see the final game, or at least a version damn near final. In that, there's a shop. That's what the gold's for. God damn it, I'm gutted I only have the demo. I really am. Another thing in terms of the gameplay is, while the jumping and the killing of enemies is quite good, it's a little slippy. And it's kind of weird. It's as if it's slippery when you're in the air. Like, if I have a... Let's say a pit I need to jump across. This pit looks quite large, quite distant. So I need to jump at the very edge in order to avoid the death and get right across. I always misjudge it and I'll fall. So I either judge too late and fall to my death, or I judge too soon, jump in the air, but because I didn't wait long enough, I don't make the jump and I fall at the far end. It's weird how slippy it is. It's not so much that it's delayed as the momentum in the game is a little bit weird. You do get used to it, but it took me some time, and by then, I had done the fucking demo. I had beaten it. So that was a shit. What is also a shit is that I can't find any physical release for this. Apparently it was all intended. Look, here's a picture of a special deluxe Master System box with a map of the game, an 8-bit and modern soundtrack. I have not heard modern, I heard the 8-bit one. It was... Like I said, it weren't great, maybe the modern one's better, but it comes with all this cool shit, or at least it was intended to. 
last bit of news I could find on this game was around 21. Uh, some people had done videos on it in 22, but the game developer didn't really put up any news on the game. So it's as if it got so far, maybe he did a Kickstarter somewhere that I can't find evidence of, and didn't reach his goal, and just gave up and left it as a digital thing you can download in some places. That's that's it. It's a shame it didn't get to at least just a, the fucking cartridge with the case would have been brilliant. All this other shit, yeah, it's nice, but it's not necessary. I mean, I keep finding pictures where the guy had a 3D printed key ring of the tower from the game. Why he went that far, hoping that he'd be able to sell it and stuff, I don't know, but he did seem to truly believe he could get this. The game is great, it looks great, it sounds okay, it's damn fun, but it didn't seem at least to get as far as he wanted in terms of uh, I don't know, the financial goal of it all. There's not much more to say. It's very simple in its style, but it's very good in it. Everything, again, black and red. Quite a horror, scary-like theme to it. There's gold everywhere to collect, so I can only assume you would have needed a lot of said gold to buy stuff in the shop. Buy what? I don't know. It wasn't in the demo. Maybe lives. Um, weapon power-ups. Who fucking knows? I'm gutted I don't, because, again, only the bloody demo. But this is why I wanted to talk about this today, because of the limited time I had to actually talk about it. Bear in mind, wife's birthday, okay? I had no choice but to make this a shorter podcast today, um, and that's why I thought this was the perfect thing to talk about. Rather than try and say everything about a game and fail... Why don't I talk about this demo I got to try? Because I only got to try a slice of this thing. Tower of Sorrow for the Master System. Check it out. See if you can play it somewhere. It it was bloody great. I'm going to have to see if there's a way to download it, but I don't know what I'm doing with emulation. I'm a fucking idiot. Zob still will back that up. He knows I'm stupid. Marso Blatard, God, that guy, he's... Uh, He's undoubtedly sick of me and my uselessness. <laughs> Let's be honest. Mike Rouse, yep. Yeah, he's the same. So, wow. I'm becoming infamous as a useless prick. That's great, isn't it? That's great. Well, thank you very much for checking out this episode of the 16 Bitchin' Podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. I promise next time I will make it a bit more in-depth with everything. Um, yep, had to go a bit more limited today, but hey, we had fun. And um, I need to buy a new Dreamcast because uh, someone shot my one. I don't know. I don't know who. I don't know who did that. That reminds me. I fucking left the gun out. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much for listening or watching. If you're doing YouTube, don't forget to share this with your friends. And if you hated it, share it with your enemies. Who gives a fuck? Thank you very much. And I will see you on the next one. <laughs>